Institute in San Antonio, Texas, and we want to welcome you to the Ask the Geriatrician. Today, uh, we also want to thank the Baptist Health Foundation of San Antonio for providing funding that enables us to provide this program and others. In addition to the Baptist Foundation, we also want to thank the Methodist Healthcare Ministries Foundation, the San Antonio Area Foundation, Prior Trust, and the many other individuals and organizations who support the mission of mmlearn.org. Okay, we want this to be interactive, so there are a couple things that we want to remind you of. If you want to ask a question, there's a bubble. It reminds me of a comic, a comic bubble at the top of the screen. You'll see that. If you click on that, you'll be able to send a question. We'd like to know where you're watching from. We have people who join us from New York City and all the way to Homer, Alaska. So if you're anywhere in between, let us know that you're watching and let us know what you do and what's of interest to you. If you have a question, you can call 210-264-7000 or 210-734-1222. And some people may be joining by phone, and we're welcoming you also today. The presentation today is something we all need to know about. If we're fortunate, we'll all experience this. And we have a wonderful expert today. His name is Robert Parker. He is uh, with the University uh, Health Science Center in San Antonio, and he's a geriatrician. So please help me welcome Dr. Parker. Dr. Parker. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, today we're going to talk about aging and what makes us get old. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, topics, and I've given this talk a number of times. Um, I, just a little background on myself. I've been practicing geriatrics now for about 30 years. I've been with the University of Texas Health Science Center now for 13 years, and I'm currently the chief of geriatrics here in San Antonio. So let's go ahead and get started. This picture uh, is one of my favorites. It really is a dramatic and emotionally uh, stimulating picture about how we age, and how subtle it is, and how slowly it occurs. Now, as we go through the talk over the next uh, 40 minutes or so, we'll be trying to define what aging is. And I want to talk about some of the major theories of aging. What is it that makes us grow old? And some of the changes that occur in our bodies as we do grow old. I also want to discuss the concept of functional reserve. In other words, how much reserve does an organ have? How much function can we lose in our liver or our heart before we start suffering symptoms? And then we're going to describe uh, some of the changes in specific organ systems. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are, said Satchel Page. Uh, for those that are young enough that don't know who Satchel Paige is, he is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was a Negro uh, baseball player, pitcher, who was quite famous. Uh, he was uneducated, but he was very wise. This comment that he made, this uh, quote that I'm giving you, makes you think about how old are you really? Is age a number, or is it a matter of function? Now, this will wake you up. Uh, this is a picture of a naked mole rat on the left and a picture of a common household mouse on the right. And the reason I'm showing these is the house mouse has a life expectancy of about a year to 18 months in the wild. Uh, in the laboratory, they may live up to three years. The naked mole rat has a life expectancy of about 30 years. They're both about the same size. What is the difference? There are many reasons for that. The naked mole rat actually lives in an arid 
desert in uh, Africa, in uh, East Africa, I believe it is, and it lives underground most of its life. And it has spent most of its life hibernating. But it may, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, it may be that their metabolic uh, processes shut down a little bit during the hibernation. Now I want to comment on the difference between life expectancy and life span. Because these are two different concepts. Life span really hasn't changed any in the last several hundred years. But life expectancy has. For instance, the life expectancy at birth in 1900 was about 49 years. Now, as we all know, it's well into the late 70s and for women, the early 80s. Jeanne Clement, she is the oldest recorded uh, living human being. So she defines what lifespan is. She uh, was well into her, I think she was 113 when she passed away. This uh, demonstrates the life expectancy since 1900. And as you can see, uh, it's almost doubled in the last uh, 100 years. It's starting to plateau off a little bit. Most of the changes in our life expectancy have occurred because of things like uh, vaccinations, improved health care, improved sanitary conditions, uh, improving our diets, and so forth. Not all based on the results of uh, improved medical care, but some of it we can take credit for. Now this is a little bit of a complicated slide, but it, it's meant to bring home the point that uh, life expectancy is directly related to your income. <clears throat> and that makes intuitive sense. If you look at the, see if I can get this arrow to work here, at the one in the front, this is, uh, on, on this side, you can't quite read it, it's the axis says death rate per 100,000 population. And over here we're looking at per capita income and here is the income inequality in quartiles. So the people with the highest income and the lowest income inequality have the lowest death rate. And conversely, those that are impoverished and are in the worst quartile for income inequality have the highest death rate. That does make intuitive sense, but this is such a powerful factor in predicting your life expectancy, it's even more powerful than medical care. Now if we look at national differences in life expectancy, this is a report that was uh, published in 2002 the red bar indicates uh, the United States. All of the others are other countries. Australia, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Italy, Japan. Hong Kong has the highest uh, life expectancy. And you can see that the United States is not doing very well compared to the others. Only Mexico is doing worse. Now, Let's compare the maximum life span, what's the longest an organism can live, among different species. As we were talking about, mice in the best conditions in a laboratory can live up to four years. At least one mouse has done that, and that defines the lifespan. Dogs, up to 29 years. Cats, up to 36 years. Horses, up to I'm sorry, horses up to 62 years, and chimpanzees, 75 years. Humans, Jeanne Clomet, the woman I was just showing you earlier, uh, lived to be 122.4 years. The Galapagos turtle can live to be 190 years. And the bowhead whales, 211 years. Now, there is a tendency for lifespan